TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. You know, for years we were promised the mythical, magical creature known as the flying car. But for some reason it never really happened. Today, however, we're at the massive Air Venture show to meet a company that's trying to make good on that promise. Yeah, that's a flying car. All right, so we're here with Carl Dietrich, the CEO of Terrafugia. Thanks so much for being with us. Hey, thanks, Bradley. You have made a car that flies. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the process from the beginning to where we are today. It's been a long process. Uh, we started back in 2006. The co-founders and I met in grad school at MIT in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics. The FAA had recently changed the rules to make it a little easier to bring a new product to market. So we were looking to leverage those rules to try to bring something to the general aviation in industry that had the potential to be truly revolutionary and disruptive for us. Is it a car that flies? Is it a plane that drives? It's a little bit of both. We usually think of it more as an airplane, an airplane that has the added capability of driving down the road at highway speeds, parking in a single car garage. Right. So walk me through the unfolding of the wings. Sure, the pilot, or the driver in this case, uh, turns off the vehicle and turns the key to a wing position. He enters in a personal identification number. After that, all he has to do is push two buttons, the wings come down. As the wing unfolds, we have two L-shaped locks that come into place and lock the wing in. And those are on top of the wing, so you can see them during your pre-flight. You can just look and see that the wing is locked. So what actually happens between car to plane mode with the engine? Because it's not like you have two engines. Right, we have one engine, and what we have is in front of the propellers, we have a gearbox. And inside the gearbox, we can shift between drive mode and propeller mode. During the conversion, when he shifts in the propeller, the transmission locks the prop into place and disengages the drivetrain. They are separated and they're engaged here for the drive mode. Correct. Separate and engage here for the, for the propeller. Prop yep. Okay. It can go about 100 miles an hour in the mm -hmm. air. And then you could just land and drive to the gas station. Exactly, yeah. And you don't use Avgas, right? Right, yeah, so it's better for the environment and it's about 30% less expensive than Avgas. Fill it up with premium unleaded. And a lot more available, I would say. Oh yeah. And you guys have a parachute on this too, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. In an emergency situation, if all else fails, pull a handle inside the cockpit, deploys the parachute, and the entire vehicle comes down underneath the parachute. There are over 5,000 public use airports in the United States. On average, there's one within a half hour drive of wherever you are. Most people don't know that, but wow. it's our nation's largest underutilized transportation resource. So a vehicle like the Transition would help us make much better use of that existing infrastructure. So you guys have to adhere to the FAA and the NHTSA. What's been the most difficult rule that you guys have had to come across? The challenge is actually making kind of the solution, the single solution to all these rules at the same time. It's taken a long time to get to where we are and we've had to ask for a few special considerations from both NHTSA and the FAA. And both organizations have been willing to do that because this vehicle is in the end gonna be significantly increasing the level of safety of personal aviation. Things like a safety cage, crumple zones, Airbags, airbags, head impact protection and closure. Those, those things that we take for granted in modern cars, you may not even know about them, but they're there. Right, right. right. They're adding that additional level of safety. We're bringing that to the general aviation industry with the long-term goal of making personal aviation even safer than driving your car. Price point on this? $279,000. So it's like a super sports car. In okay. US. The best selling airplane in all of history was the Cessna 172. That one now has a base price just over $300,000. Okay. Yeah. So you're around that, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, ballpark. Plus you yeah. can drive. Plus we can drive. Added bonus. This is also leading to something else. Tell me about the TFX. So TFX is Terrafuji's vision for the future. The transition was built and designed with today's regulations in mind, you know, so that we can sell it today with today's technology. The TFX looks to the future, both in terms of technology and regulations. TFX is a vertical takeoff and landing hybrid electric airplane that has autonomous flight capability. So you could get into it, tell it where you want to go, and it would take you there. One of the challenges that we have with TFX and that we're working with the regulators on is the actual creation of the standards that you certify to, uh, right? Because you're talking about new things like electric propulsion for aircraft. There's no standards for that today. Mm. We have the opportunity right now to really pave the road for the flying car future that we've all dreamed of. Pave the road that you could also fly off of. Uh, in <laughs> in many car, ways. Huh? All right, so with the transition finally logging some flight hours and the TFX in the pipeline, it seems like Terrafugia is really intent on bringing this dream of a flying car to life. 
We really hope it works. For TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.